It's been around for several years, uh, but no one has ever engaged it from the Duchenne community, which is perplexing as well. And it's very simple oxygen therapy, where the hyperbaric chamber compresses oxygen into human beings at different atmospheric pressure. This has been going on for years for elite athletes, burn victims, but no one has ever took that concept and said, hey, this is a muscle wasting disease. Let's saturate the organs, the tissue with oxygen. Maybe it may not be a cure, but it may do enough to the interior of the body where it can slow down the disease. Where at 12, my son will still be walking. At 13, he just may still be hopping, right? So the, the statistics is at the age of nine to 12, he should be in a wheelchair. So instead of me only having two years to save his life, I've now just gained four or five years. So maybe, maybe that in that development, a lot of things can spiral out of controls to say, okay, we've compressed the oxygen into his system and he's still walking. The muscle tissue is still viable. We're keeping it healthy. His cardiac and his pulmonary functions are off the charts. So how do we now look at this from a very rudimentary standpoint? Why does the, the magic bullet have to be a drug? There could be other things. And by the simple definition of muscular dystrophy is dystrophy is lack of nutrition. So I've been appealing to many is to look at this from an outside the box perspective. How do we get the muscle tissue to rejuvenate or at least stay stagnant where he doesn't lose any more tissue to keep him whole for the next several years? And we're doing that. And it's, it's been working wonders for my son. He is in a hyperbaric chamber now for the last 11 months. As I stated, his cardiac and his pulmonary functions are off the charts. His ability to run is faster than any other child his age suffering from Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Three seconds faster in a 30 meter dash. That's remarkable. If these statistics were in the NFL, he'd be a million dollar man there'd be agents wanting to sign him. But yet, you take this to the medical community and nobody wants to put any sort of credibility to the fact that it's the hyperbaric chamber. So what did we do? We had to then look inward at uh, uh, us at Jar of Hope and say, how do we prove that this is actually working? Well, starting March 1st, we enlisted the University of Minnesota and they are gonna help us prove that this actually works. We're gonna take the first ever Duchenne mouse model and put it in the hyperbaric chamber. We're gonna look at this at two different atmospheric pressures. Uh, one may simulate 11 feet below sea level and the other may simulate five feet below sea level. And we're gonna do this for a 24 month period in the mouse model and see, our first, our short term goal is to see if it reduces inflammation in the mice. And then we're gonna look at its cardiac and its pulmonary function to see how it's increased, how it's rescued the heart tissue. And from these findings, I can almost guarantee you it's going to work in the reduction of inflammation. And from there, we have a whole new ball game. Duchenne muscular dystrophy can be looked at on an entirely new level that it's never been looked at before in 184 years. And this is a game changer for these boys, but we need the Duchenne community to rally behind it and support this concept. It's not gonna take anybody's life. There's no risk to being inside a hyperbaric chamber. The only thing it can do is collaterally improve your heart. There's no downside to this, yet everybody's afraid to put their child in it. And it's perplexing. Well, my son is in it. I'm proof positive. My son Jamesy is proof positive that it's okay. I sleep in the chamber, he sleeps in the chamber. Um, if that doesn't show everybody that I'm willing to put my son through this, that it's that, that well of a concept, I don't know what else to do except to now spend a good amount of money to physically come up with data to show it.